Well, well, well. Back to Facebook. Woohoo! God is good. He is faithful. Good afternoon, Facebook. This is Rhonda from The Gathering, the Good News Channel. Um, we have some good news today. We have had Tom Codell here this morning from Norwalk, who's a powerful, anointed man of God, um, who does uh, some rap and hip hop. Um, he just cut his first album, um, a super awesome anointed man. So if you haven't heard him, find my page, watch it, listen to it. Super awesome. You can also go to YouTube. He has a video called Oceans. You can look it up. It's under uh, Tom Codell as well. Um, super awesome, awesome, awesome song. Very touching and very anointing. So listen to the words and listen to what um, God has to say through him because he's very anointed. Um, and today's, um, this afternoon, we're going to have Miss Dawn Cass Evans here do some worship a little bit, a couple songs, and then um, she's going to um, give a message. Uh, and our message and theme this week is um, being a disciple. So we're here today to um, be good disciples of the Lord and to give everything to him. Let's learn to surrender and do the things that we need to do for Christ so that we could go back out and teach other people to do the same thing. Um, because God is good and he is faithful and he's waiting for us to um, be, uh, do our due diligence. Um, so with that to say, I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to blow the horn because God is coming and he's coming soon. So Father, we just praise you and glorify you. We say thank you for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Father, Give us fresh revelation of who you are and who you want us to be, Father. Because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Because you are who you say you are. Yeah. Father, we love you and we need you in our life, Father. No matter how much our body and our fleshly vessel says no, our brains and our bodies and our minds and souls should always say yes. Um, so let us learn how to... Um, abide in his word and his love. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Yeah. And all God's people said amen. Amen. amen.
that it's not enough. Yeah. And it is enough. Yeah. Because it's not about us. That's right. And uh, but it's all about us and how much he loves us. <sighs> so um, so this is another song he gave me. And he's been so good. He's such a good God. He's so faithful and true. And uh, and I. Um, for me, I know I didn't know who I was, and I'll share a little bit more of my journey in a minute, but for now, um, I actually called the title of my thing, My Journey, Acts 29, circa 1969 plus, going Kristen. <laughs> so, so, that's where I'm at right now, but uh, this song is, uh, Do You Know Who You Are? Yeah. Do you know who you are? Do you know why you're here? Have you asked the one before you dear? Do you know who you are? Do you know why you're here? Have you asked the one before you dear? He made you together. Your dream will win. So come and see where we live. He made you together. Your dream will win. crazy wild gift you know because when you when you first get saved thank you <laughs> and um, you know you're on cloud nine in a sense um, sometimes not always and so I think we uh, everybody has a different journey and I think we get um, people sharing their testimonies and their journey and we think it's supposed to look like that and um, everybody's journey is different, but everybody's journey speaks to you if you let it. So, um, so my journey is this: um, when I was younger, 
I was not raised in a Christian home. I won't even go into it. And I'll tell you why later. <laughs> no, um, but my mom prayed. Um, and she taught us to pray to be our father at night. And I couldn't remember how to say it unless I said it really fast. Our Father Martin, I tell him, be thy name, the kingdom come, they will be done. I'm not visited in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I was like, yes, I did it. <laughs> right? But if I tried to slow it down, I was like, I it. I mess it up every time. And uh, isn't that life? You know, isn't that life we try to rush through? You know, when we're younger, we're like, I can't wait till I'm older. When we're older, we're like, I can't wait till this pain goes away. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Pastor Pete says, can't wait to get to heaven. <laughs> there's, there's glory in your story. Yeah. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the word of our testimony. Amen. So, we need to share our testimonies and we need to not be afraid. We need to not think that the only way that God works is through a ministry college. Because that's not the only way he works. That's actually, that's actually, yeah, yeah, I think we, we like think we have to study and we have to read every day and we have to, we have to do, 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 and I call it get stuck in the do, do, and don't share your poo. Because I'm just, stay-at-home mom and a stay-at-home grandma and and that's what I do yeah. and that's that's what God gave me to do yeah. because my husband was able to work and I was able to stay home and I'm blessed by that and I'm grateful for that yeah. and I wasn't always grateful for that that's it because it's a tough journey that's another full sermon yes <laughs> so <laughs> so we have to <laughs> Okay, so when I was younger, I had heard about Jesus, but it wasn't personal. I didn't take it in. I heard the story of Jesus. But my middle name is Kristen, and it's spelled Christ in. And I couldn't spell it <laughs> unless I did it that way. And, and it was like a Christ mass, Christ in. I literally would have to almost connect those things to remember how to spell my own name. And it didn't, I didn't understand the significance of that at the time. As a matter of fact, it's just recently that he kind of, you know, unveiled that. And I think in our lives, there's unveilings that happen and we want them now. But it's not time for now. Right. And so that's that patient, long-suffering thing we were talking about earlier sometimes. Um, so I think we all have heard the story of Jesus, especially in the United States um, and in many other countries. Um, and then when I was a teenager, I was invited to a service, to a church. And it was, it was a spiritual church. At the time, I did not know that. I went to the church and I felt something, but I was afraid. So when the invitation went out for salvation, I was afraid. And I didn't understand what I was feeling, and it scared me. And so I, I left, not sure what all that was, and went to my mother and asked, um, Mom, there was some, you know, he said something about salvation and and, and I was warned against the born again Christians. <laughs> Sounds familiar. She was a boss, a white Anglo Saxon Protestant, and that's the way it was. Um, but what I didn't know at that time was that God had really radically touched my mom. And uh, God showed me that later, and, um, and that's why she prayed. Do you know what I mean? But I think we pray, but we don't, I mean, we have an experience with God. 
we have that moment where we go, wow, like he's real. And, and maybe he radically does something in our lives. But because we don't have solid teaching, we don't have discipleship. And simple discipleship, where you can live your everyday life and walk it out, we think we can't do it. We walk away, afraid. Because there's a hell and there's a God in heaven and something's happening and I don't know what it is, but it's scary. <laughs> That's what it is. So, so at that point, I, you know, kind of left that alone, but, but I knew there was a God. Um, so then, um, when I had my first child, I wanted to be a good mom. And I didn't know how. Um, and so I started going to church and I went to um, a Catholic church on a military base <laughs> run by a woman yeah. <laughs> that the munches yeah. the, the, excuse me, the munches <laughs> the munches <laughs> I'm hungry, no, I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm not hungry at all um, that the monks came in and taught at the local convent of monks. Right? Yeah, so they would come in and preach. There was no father. And, um, but the Holy Spirit was there. Yeah. Now, I didn't know that either then. <laughs> but I've walked through this journey like this a lot, and I think a lot of us do. We don't know what we have. We don't know who Jesus is. We don't know all of those things until the unveiling. Mm -hmm. And we have to let him do the unveiling. But we have to want it, mm -hmm. and we have to seek him. Mm -hmm. And that is a big part of discipleship. When he said to his disciples, what did he say? Come follow me. He didn't say, go to school, read your Bible, check out that Torah. He said, come follow me. And so we need to come follow him. And what that looks like in each of our lives is different. So, um, so on that military journey, uh, it, was, it, was, um, it was tough. It was tough. Um, I started going to a fellowship group at that point, and it was run by the woman who, um, who ran the church. And she just had a, a like a fellowship tea kind of thing, and she would she had three questions: Where have you seen Jesus? How are you doing? And how can you apply like how you see Jesus? What can you do with that? And so. Um, at that point, like I said, I was a mom, and I wanted to be a good mom. So I would, I mean, God's so good to us. He speaks our language, you know, and so he spoke to me through my baby. And so I would say, I've seen Jesus in the eyes of my child. <laughs> and... Um, just recently, I'm going to do a little rabbit trail. Just recently, I went to a church, and, and I had been um, struggling with my, with just the frustration of ministry and faith and whatever, the whole gamut of life. And um, I walked in that church, and I was just broken. I was just so tired. And I just was crying. And in front of me, there was a little girl who did not want to be a church, I'm just saying. <laughs> I love her, she was so sweet. But she played peekaboo with me. Yeah, come on. And my heart melted, because I knew that was Jesus. <laughs> and I went home and I posted on Facebook, I played peekaboo with Jesus today. Yeah. And it was exactly what I needed. It was exactly what I needed. And, and he doesn't need us to be perfect. 
He doesn't need us to do all the right things. He doesn't need us to be healed. He doesn't need us to believe. He doesn't need us. He's God alone. Yeah. But he wants us. And in the wanting, just like us with our children or us with our, our spouses, if we're married, we need them. He needs us in that same way. It's not a need to do. It's a love. It's a love that undoes you, that but puts you back together, but in the right way, because we're undone by this world. I was undone by this world, and I was afraid of what that holiness looked like. I was afraid. And I think we all, we need to have that healthy fear of the Lord, but it's not the fear that runs from him. Yeah. But he's willing to have you run from him and to come and run after you. Yeah. And invite you again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Uh, yeah. and again. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited. So, so on this journey, um, from there, we, uh, we, were, um, we were in Virginia, and then we went to Germany. And in Germany, I still went to the Catholic Church because he was Catholic, Dusty, my husband, Dusty. And um, he said I had to go to Catholic Church because that was how that worked for his kids, and which is okay. We had to get them baptized and all of that. But he, he didn't go to church. <laughs> I was a Catholic. So we literally, he was a Catholic. He were so, so we So we had to, um, we had to go to the Catholic go church, Catholic. which was fine. Yeah. And when we were in Germany, um, and it was, it was spirit-filled, and another little snippet on that church, I didn't understand what was happening there, um, but I would feel the presence of God. And... Um, there were people that were devastated because the church was closing down. And I was like, well, okay, but isn't there another church right down the road? I mean, they're like really close. There's a lot of churches. It's amazing how many churches there are. It's incredible. It's so exciting. You know what I mean? And they're like, they were, I mean, they were devastated. And I was like, what is that? And I, again, I did not know. So all of the things I've shared, little snippets are a lot of um, hindsight, whereas you press into the Lord and you talk to Him, and and you and He shows you. He go, you know, He shows you. He like unveils, uh, kind of like when uh, was it Moses was the, that hid in the rock in the in the cleft of the rock, yep. Yep. and then He looked back and saw. You know what I mean? It's that it's that thing where where you trust Him. And he does the unveiling. But a lot of it, it's a faith walk, guys. Faith is not a seeing thing. Faith is not a feeling thing. Faith is a doing thing. But it's not a doing to, to be saved. It's a doing out of love because you are saved. It's like um, the scripture that... Um, you know the scripture, um, obedience is better than sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, one of, my, one of my children one time, I asked her to do dishes. I won't <laughs> reveal which one. And, <laughs> All of them. and we'll explain that later too. No. <laughs> um, so I asked her to do dishes, and instead she baked muffins or, or cupcakes. And so it was already a disaster in the kitchen. And, and she made a bigger mess. <laughs> and then in the unveiling of that, because in the ordinary things of your life, whether you're a mechanic or a, or a, or a pastor or a president or a, 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 you know, whatever you are, cleaner, you know what I mean, whatever you do, whoever you are, he'll unveil to you. So in that, in that, moment he unveiled to me this that scripture obedience is better than sacrifice and i went oh oh i get it because i mean it's beautiful that they love you enough to bake you a cake or or cupcakes or whatever it is but 
it would have been better to clean the kitchen and do the dishes. <laughs> it really would have been better. Because um, it just adds to the stress. You know, and I and it got simple in in that context. And we we make we complicate him. Yeah. And and he's just trying to help us out. <laughs> he's just trying to help us out and 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 let us live stress free stress free lives. Because when we're stress free, we can love like he loves. Yeah. Because it, it comes naturally out of us because he lives in us. So um, so it was a long journey. Um, from Virginia to Germany, and in Germany, the uh, we didn't have a car, so <laughs> instead of going, well, we had one car, but he had to use it for to get to work, so I would walk to, there was a, the school, and at the school, they would have, they would have Sunday school for the kids, so I would teach the really young kids, so I had one on the back and one strapped on the front, because they were both little at the time, and I would teach because in the in the Catholic um, religion, I I didn't understand any of it, but I I could teach God loves you, and that's pretty much where they stay for a long time. So I'm good with the baby on front, the baby on back, and God loves you. I can do that. So um, we color coloring pages or whatever. So that's how I stayed connected with the church at that time. And uh, so again, it's simple, simple, just living life with God. And um, and then I met in that time frame. I, I was able to go to a conference, at least one, if not two, I can't remember, because um, they went to the Fatima or whatever the stuff is they do over there and all that stuff. And um, and I met more charismatic people who, now the woman that ran the, um, the military um, chapel in Virginia said, oh, that's just the Holy Ghost, when I said, well, I feel like, all of a sudden I feel like something bursts out of my chest, I don't understand it, I'm like blown back, and my kids are whirling around and bringing up my dress, because you're supposed to wear a dress when you're Catholic, and all these things. And um, so, um, and, and she just said, well, that sounds like the Holy Ghost. And I was like, Holy Ghost? What is that? So God unveils. You know, he disciples us. Yeah. And we need to be patient. And we need to be real. And so in that time, he brought me to those, to more charismatic people who walked in the spirit. And so at one point, I had walked into a, a church, and it was an empty church. And I saw Jesus, like eyes open. And then I closed my eyes, he was on the altar. And then I closed my eyes and I still saw Jesus on the altar and it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> and, um, but I was like, I don't understand what that, what, that, what that is. But it's him discipling us, you know? It's him, as you walk out with him year after year, just being who you are and letting him Letting him in to the cupcakes and to the trash, and letting him in to the clutter and the chaos, and letting him in to the mess and the screaming, and letting him in to the fear and the tears, and letting him in to the pain and the hopelessness, and letting him in to those, those places that you don't even remember because of whatever's happened to you as a child. Because I had things that I didn't even remember about my childhood because it was too painful. And I said to God, Lord, I want to know because I want to be free. I want to be free. I'm tired of being afraid of everything. I'm tired of saying I'm sorry all the time for things that other people do. I'm I'm tired, and I want to be free. And he said, no. No. No, you can't go there. But he removed it. 
He removed it anyways because he's faithful and he's good. And I think we want all the answers. And sometimes he says, no, those are mine. You don't need those. I already paid for those. On the cross, you don't have to go there anymore. Your sin is, is thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. That's, that's the, you get to be free of it. Because he knows everything. You get to be free of it. As far as the east is from the west, I have removed your sin. Well, guess what? East and West are right here. So what does that mean? And we're like, it's, it's far away. No. It's repentance. It's forgiveness. It's turning. It's perspective. You get to repent. You get to turn to him. And look face to face into the eyes of the one that loves you unconditionally. And he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. So, um, from there, we took a long, another long journey, um, military again. We um, ended up in Missouri. And in Missouri, I was still going to Catholic churches, um, but there was a revival meeting. And I didn't know what revival meeting was or what revival meeting meant, but I wanted to go. And um, I went, it was a three day, I went, you know, the first, second, third day. And on the third day, it was a night. And uh, I was walking into the church. And um, it was dark, and I had dark clothes on, and I was walking across the street, and I had one car go one way around me and one car go another, and they were both on that side. And, uh, and I knew that I was supposed to be dead. And I... At that meeting, God filled me like with this liquid love. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm shaking. And I didn't understand. And uh, but I knew I should have died out there. And um, so I sat there in this meeting with another friend of mine. Amy. And he just filled me and filled me. And I heard the word testify. Testify. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. But they said anyone who has a testimony can come up front, so You're right. I'm shaking. <laughs> I can't I can't even walk straight. But okay, so I'm like trying to walk along the wall and come up and and there's someone at the front and, and they said, you know, can you tell me why you're here? And I was like, I don't know. I just keep hearing the word testify. And I'm like shaking and I'm not even trying to pull myself up, but doing my best. And uh, they, they brought me into a back room. And uh, and, there, and and I now I know, like again, one of those hindsights of failing, they weren't sure if it was God or the devil. Which is okay, that's happened a lot with me. I was like <laughs> not a big deal. Um, I guess some of it was, you know, I was born in Salem Mass, so you know, that can get all confusing and <laughs> stuff, whatever. Anyway, so um, so so they brought me in the back and they started to pray for me and say, you know, speaking, we're praying for your tongues. And I was like, the what? And they said, we're praying for your tongues. And I was like, the, the what? So they said, don't worry about it. Just say chakra kalava and whatever they said. And I was like, the chakra what kalava? <laughs> but 
there was two things going on inside of me. I literally could hear that voice, my voice saying, the what? And, and them, but um, there was another. There was a drawing, but I didn't understand. And so they had the pastor's wife come in and she, um, she came up to me and she said, no, it's definitely God. <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost. And I was like, well, that's good. You know, in my head. Because <laughs> there's two voices inside of us. Yes. You know, and I didn't know that. I didn't understand that. And I don't think we understand that. And um, so, so she's, she's, she said, she said, stand her up. And so I'm like, rrr, shaking. And, and she stood, like two people stood me up and she was praying. And all of a sudden she pushed right here on my stomach and I remember, and it, it just came out in tongues. All, it just flowed. But it came out in song. And it didn't stop for months. <laughs> I I couldn't pray in English anymore yeah. for a long time, yeah. and so so I get, so I get home, and uh, but there at the church there was this there was tongues and then there was it was but there was a, a knowing of something more in English but I but it was just this amazing thing anyways. And so I still didn't know what was going on or what happened, which was okay. And I think we need to know that. It's okay. We don't need to know. Let's just do this thing. Let's just do this thing. And um, so within a couple of days, there was a, there was a, a guy who came to my door and knocked on the door. And he I, I was a pastor or something, I, I, you know, trying to save people. And he said, you know, tongues are of the devil, right? And I was like, the what? <laughs> Because I didn't even know what those were. Then all of a sudden, somebody comes to my door and says that, and I was, uh, isn't, that, isn't that how it goes though? Do you know what I mean? So I, I struggled with that, and I, and, and I talk, but I talked to God about it. I talked to him. You know what I mean? And he set me free from that, and I prayed for people, and all of a sudden there were manifestations of like whirlwinds and and, and, and people are getting healed and, and, and things are happening and, and people are crying while I'm praying for them and they're like, how do you know what, how do you know that? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know anything. I'm just, you know, I'm just praying. You just asked me to pray, I'm just praying, I have no idea. You know, but that's our God. We don't need to know. Yeah. Mm. We need to love. But so around that time there was there was someone who came uh, to a, another, and I started to go into multiple churches at that point because I was like, I need, I need God. I just need God. I'm a mess. I am a mess, honey. I'm a mess. <laughs> He's like, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> Praise God. He's working. Miracles happen every day. We were doing a prayer circle, and someone said, um, uh, can we pray for a girl who's been molested? And I went, oh, dear God. But my heart, I mean, my heart broke for her, but my heart was for the offender. And I said, well, how do we even pray for him? And they were like, the what? <laughs> what do you mean, pray for him? What? You... And I was like, well, I don't know, but like if we pray for him, that God will change him, and he won't keep doing that and hurting other people or her or anyone anymore. That's you know what I mean. But that's God. Mm. That's our God. That's discipleship. Yeah. The word says, "Pray for your enemies." Yeah. yeah. But He makes it simple for us. Mm -hmm. There's unctions that happen inside of us, and. And we stuff them a lot of times because we don't want to look funny, you know, because we're shaking at church or what is that? Or, you know, or we're feeling something where we're all of a sudden feeling, you know, a presence blowing out of our chest or we're feeling fire.
that's discipleship. And we shut those things off. And, and there are hungers and desires inside of us. And we stuff them down. And um, sometimes there is that other voice. Like I remember I said there are two voices inside of us. So as I'm walking this um, journey out, um, I was at a, a meeting one day and um, I heard the Lord say, you're the Antichrist. And I went, the what? <laughs> so I guess that's the, the title, but there should be the what? No. <laughs> But that's me. That's been my my whole life. Anyways, um, so I I was I was devastated because I knew it was him, and I didn't know what to do with it. But as I talked with him, instead of running from him, he started to reveal to me that that old way of thinking the old hatred of self, the old shame, the old condemnation, the old fear, the old anger, the old frustration, the old brokenness, the old self-loathing, the old devastation was anti-Christ. It was not who he said I am. Right. And but it was a long journey. And it was a journey of love. He didn't he didn't say it to offend me. But boy can we get offended, huh? Yeah. He didn't. He said it because he loves me. It's kind of like, you know, uh, I see it as like when you're driving a manual stick vehicle and you're grinding that Come on! you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, and someone comes up and says, there's the clutch, baby, right there, see push that? In. Yeah, push that first, mm -hmm. right? But that's what he wants to do with us. He wants to say, whoa, 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 whoa. See that? See that cross? You gotta do that first. Do that first. Yeah. Do that first. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so he taught me how to reckon myself dead to sin. And it wasn't just my sins. So he taught me how to reckon myself dead to the sin of all the way back to Adam and Eve. Because the truth is, that's where it all begins. Mm -hmm. And we have to know that he died for all sin. So we get to come to the place where we get to put it all there. All the abuses. All the pain all the misuses, yeah. that's discipleship. Come follow me. Mm -hmm. And we won't, when we hear pick up our cross, pick up your cross and follow him, sorry, got my papers, <laughs> praise God. Um, and I don't have a phone, so you're gonna have to give me when it's time to yeah. stuff, I'm sorry. So, um, just keep your <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what would I say? Oh, Lord help. So, I get to reckon myself dead to sin. I get to start coming to the cross. And what I learned was I don't, I don't have to carry those things. Yeah. Because that's false martyrdom or self-martyrdom. That's self-righteousness. That's not my job. I got to leave them there. And, and not only just leave them there, but die with Christ and raise again and ascend into heavenly places in Christ Jesus where I'm seated with him far above principalities and powers and rulers where I get to be untouchable. We get to be untouchable in this earth But we don't have we don't have to stop there either. So that led me on this overhauling journey, you know. And it's it's a it's like a roller coaster ride a lot of times. <laughs> it it just does it does it, it feels good. 
It feels good for some people sometimes. It feels good for all of us sometimes. But there are other times it feels like you're totally out of control. Yeah. And you are. You are, and that's the point. Mm -hmm. You are no longer your own. You're bought with a price. Yeah. This is that price. Mm -hmm. That's what he did for us. Mm -hmm. But he didn't buy it just by our sins. He didn't just pay for our sins. He didn't just... He reconciled us to the Father. Yeah. And he bought a covenantal commitment with us. Right. To bring glory to God, the Father, in the earth, in the temporary realm of sin, where we get to come to the table and be seated with our enemies and bring God glory. Yeah. Just like he did with Judas, right? Mm -hmm. He came to the table. Mm -hmm. We get to be disciples. Even Judas got to be disciples. Yeah. We get to be disciples. But then we have to choose. And, and it's that place of free will choosing where we start to, um, for me, uh, there was a, a um, I was having um, struggles with my, my marriage. And I called the church and I said, just give me a scripture. I need a scripture about marriage. I don't know the Bible. Never, I know nothing. I, I need, I just need a scripture to stand on because it's God's word and. It's true. Yeah, and so they gave me a scripture on marriage and I would just say that scripture. I didn't, I didn't know. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was totally God. I didn't know. But since then I learned and he, uh, God provided a book called Scripture Keys for Kingdom Living, and basically it's a, like a promise book, and it just breaks down the scriptures, and we have all kinds of stuff nowadays, but back then we didn't have much, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't Google it. <laughs> yes. There was no Google. No Google. <laughs> you were hunting. <laughs> you were hunting libraries. <laughs> but I learned in that process um, that, there, that there are there are things that you can do um, because I didn't have I didn't have mentors I didn't have counselors because we moved from place to place and I was running from church to church because I needed I just needed Jesus I needed God I needed more I needed His presence I needed I needed I needed I needed I needed need Lord I needed it because I was so empty but I was always empty because I wouldn't receive His love mm -hmm. for me. I wouldn't let him in to heal me. I would tell others that he was good. I would tell others that he loved them so much. Oh, he loves you so much. Like he died for you. He paid it all. But then inside of me, I wouldn't forgive myself. I wouldn't let it in. And with the same measure you need. So I thought I was loving people. And again, he showed me. Antichrist. I wasn't loving them. Because if you don't let him in to do the loving, you can't love your neighbor as yourself if you don't let love in. Yeah, yeah. You can't be a pipeline yeah. if you block up. So I needed a whole lot of Love clean it. out. We'll just call it that. We'll go back to the poop reference earlier. And so, people changing their own diapers. It's ugly. Sewage so cleaning. That's all. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, so I started to go and find the counsel I needed. But, but it wasn't even me finding it. You know what I mean? In, in the unveiling and in discipleship, he reveals to you, you need something, and then he shows you. Yeah. You know, so I, I, my counselors were um, through the Holy Spirit, books, or, or people I had heard about or seen, or, you know, something, this, you know, like this scripture he spoke. It was, it was someone was doing a, a Bible study, and she 
picked it up for one second and said, this is a great book, love this book, I'll put it down. And I went, oh, I need that. You know what I mean? Inside of me, it wasn't here. I need that. I don't, I don't even know what that is, but I need that book. That's the Holy Ghost inside of us. And we, we um, kind of like poo poo it away just like we do with our kids sometimes. You know what I mean? Oh, I've heard it all, honey. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. But we do that with our own selves. Yes. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You, you, you just put your big girl panties on and you fuck up and you, you, you press through in this thing. And that's not how faith works. Right. <laughs> you do this. Daddy, I can't do it. <laughs> you know that, um, uh, I, I'm sure you've all heard it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's what that, that's it, okay. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And inside of me, I would hear, I don't want to. I don't even want to want to want to. I don't want to want to want to want to want to want to. I don't want to want to want to want to want to want to want to. So, <laughs> right? We have that voice inside of us. Antichrist. It's actually called the flesh, which is enmity against God, which is Antichrist against the Word. It's not your real identity. It's not who you really are. Right. And He showed me to find myself in the Word. I'm blood bought, spirit filled. I'm holy. I'm just like Jesus. He's given us everything to include godliness in the earth. Well. Wow. I don't know if I'm going to measure up to that. I don't want to want to. But when you submit your want to want it's yeah. a start. Mm -hmm. And even if it's an I don't want to 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 want to, and you start there, okay, you know what I mean? Take off, let, let's erase one want to so that we maybe want to want to want to want to want to want to someday. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But we submit ourselves. We do we submit ourselves because we can't do it. We can't. We get to reckon ourselves dead to sin. Yeah. That means sins against us and sins we do. That's all of it. That's disease, lack. That's all of it. Because everything is in salvation. Yeah. It's Zoe life. It's it's everything we need. It's peace. It's hope. It's all the fruits of the Spirit, joy, everything, everything we need. And so we get to come to that place where we get to fight the good fight of faith and we get to stop fighting the enemy because he's a defeated foe. Again, the Antichrist, it's against the Word. The Word doesn't say we're supposed to fight the enemy. The Word says resist him and he'll flee from you. That's right. It says fight the good fight of faith. Believing. What did you do with Jesus? What did you do with Jesus? Yeah. And that's how he discipled me. Step by step. Pressing into the promises. And depending on his grace, not my ability. And so he... Uh, I heard him say a couple of things that I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> see yourself through the eyes of God. Worship and identity are keys to seeing through God's eyes. God said it. That settles it. That's right. Walk softly in the hearts of men. Your testimony, not their offenses. And uh, he said that to me the other night, and I, and I was like, oh. And I, I'm going to share, like, uh, remember I said earlier, um, I'm not going to share which daughter. And I'm, and I'm not going to talk about um, 
you know, my past. Um, but it's because there are people involved with those things. And they're not saved, or they're struggling, or they don't need their offensives thrown up in right. their faces. Right. Whatever, you know what I mean? But walk softly, walk tenderly in the hearts of men. Because their testimony, there's glory in it. That's right. But if we, if we um, take that lightly, and we forget what Jesus did for us, he paid it all. Well, he did the same for them. Mm-hmm. He paid it all. Then they, they may not come. They may not come because of our offenses. Yeah. Our offenses towards them, even though they offended us. And, and a lot of times, they have offended us. It's valid. It's valid. But, but if we don't present it well, we could lose them. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to. Because mm-hmm. our God's greater. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, he said, Are you comfortable in the Holy of Holies? It's a great and terrible day of the Lord. Yeah. But it's not ours to walk. We should be comfortable going there. Why? Because the flesh dies. Now, if we want to stay in the flesh and identify with the flesh, like Ananias and Sapphira, they drop dead. Yeah. So we need to have a healthy fear of the Lord as the children of God and as the bride, so that we know. Who's in the room with us? Mm -hmm. We're very sensitive to God. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want them to drop dead any more than we do. As a matter of fact, he wants them saved all. He wants all to be saved and come to salvation. We we may not (laughs) sometimes. Come on. (laughs) It's just getting real. You know? Sometimes we're like, oh. You know what they did to me, right? Ah, oh, daddy! Free fire out from heaven! Kill them all! Uh-huh. Right? Pain. Don't let your pain speak louder than Jesus' blood. Yeah. He is our vindicator. Yeah. And if you don't feel comfortable in the Holy of Holies, you just ask him. But there's probably old programming running, he said. There's there's probably old mindsets. You get to put off the old men. You get to reckon yourself dead to sin and alive in Christ. He translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So, um, then he said to me, sometimes the things you do or go through are not for you. And they may even bite back at you. (laughs) And that's the truth. And as an example of this, um, aren't there a lot of them? No, (laughs) no, no, I have one. (laughs) Sorry. Um, So I was driving in our car one day and going to bring him um, uh, dinner. And I had a pot (laughs) on the floor at a military base and I had cupcakes. On the, on the, no, on the dashboard. Oh, fun. And, <laughs> and it was icy. We can see how that's going. And <laughs> I, I was driving up, and, and I was driving really slow. Military days, you, you, have, you have to drive slow. Anyways, yeah. but I hit ice patch, and the ice patch went all the way through the stop sign. And there just happened to be a truck at the stop sign, because trucks can stop easier than vans. Just saying, because they got better tires and all that stuff. And so I'm like trying to stop, and it and it won't stop. And it won't stop. And I'm like, Jesus, help! And I, but it, it and the and I ended up stuck on their tow hitch. And I was like, Lord, what what was that? 
He's supposed to be protecting me. Right? But don't we question when we go through things? It hurts. And it's hard. That's money we don't have. That's I could have hurt these people. They had kids. So they were wonderful about it. The police came up. He was actually an MP at the time, so he was one of the he was one of the walked down the answer the call. Exactly what he did, like, oh. Yeah. Exactly like, oh. So, one of the many times he'd done that with me. <laughs> No, I wasn't. I wasn't the patrolman. I was the senior guy. So yes, we sent someone out. <laughs> we sent I somebody else out, out there. Got in the back of the truck to weight it down so the tow hitch should come on the. <laughs> yeah. I think he was going with a chip and So, so. Crazy. So I asked the Lord, right? You know what I mean? Because once you get over the ah, poor me, pity party, yeah. whatever, and and the why and the whatevers, um, and I asked him. And I really felt like he said, if you hadn't just, and I just didn't, I didn't hurt, you know, I didn't, I just bumped in, I literally gave the kids the cupcakes, and he was done, like, he didn't have no cupcakes that night, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> That's really <laughs> was spilled, <laughs> the cupcake frosting on the windshield. Um, but it was just a quick fix, like he said, they just unhooked and whatever, and boom, there I went, and and the you know the two cars separated it, because it was so cold it had, the tow hitch had gone through the bumper but it and it was because I think it was on the license plate so it literally yeah, was like got a, caught yeah, yeah. so it, it didn't really do any real damage um, but I really felt like the Lord said if you hadn't had that accident then the the sand trucks wouldn't have come out right yeah. if the sand trucks hadn't come out how many people could have got hurt how many people would have died and I went, oh, okay, okay. Who ended up calling out the sand trucks? So again, <laughs> sometimes the things you do or go through are not for you. Yeah. Praise God. And they may even fight back at you. Yeah. But if you trust them. So, I was in on time. Oh, you're always over, but it's okay. Oh, am I over? <laughs> it doesn't matter. We started Just a early. Touch. Okay. Yes, it's quarter keep round, going. but keep we got two hours, so keep going. I'm still awake. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> God is good. So <laughs> everybody on Facebook still listening. <laughs> hey everybody. Um, so a few other things that I just I just felt to share. Um, and of course, you always have more. You know, there's always more because that's how God works. Yeah. Um, so. For me, like I said, I'm like a cluttered mess. Disorganized. I am. You should see my notes. I like I write them all around in the thing, and I, I get that. I try to start out nice and neat, and then yeah. I'm around the edges, and I'm flipping, and then I have to put little numbers so I can go back and find where I was to begin with. Um, so I try to keep it simple. And like God said to me, "Kisses from heaven." Yeah. And I was like. He said, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but I had that, I built up that relationship with him. Does that make sense? He wouldn't, he wouldn't say that to me if I was going to take offense. Yeah. But I built up that rapport with him. Yeah. We all need to build up our rapport with the Lord and whatever that looks like. But we need to remember there are others that hear our story. So if I just go out and say, keep it simple, stupid, you know what I mean? Like daddy says to me, I could hurt somebody. Be offensive. So I said, well, what can I say instead, just in case I'm in a room and someone wouldn't understand? And, um, and he said, keep it simple, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, okay, I can do that too. But it depends on, you know what I mean? Depends on who it is. It depends on the room, and it depends on where you're at in the message and how much time you have and whatever, you know what I mean? And, and, and just be open to hearing him. And don't shut off his voice inside of you. Because he loves you, and you're his sheep, and you hear his voice. And another you will not follow unless you shut off his voice. Because you have not received his unconditional love for you. Mm-hmm. So I keep it simple. 
So pray, I pray things like, I bless every human being, family, friend, and foe, even those I don't know. I bless everything you bless, Lord, and I curse everything that you curse. Yeah. But I never curse another human being. That's right. Because God wants them all to be safe. That's right. And so we need to remember that. And, uh, and then he said, When old struggles come up, know the truth. You are not loved because of what you do, but because of who you are. Mm -hmm. You are a new creation. Old is gone, new has come. Mm -hmm. You are a spirit being. That means you look and act like him. Holy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. All your sin is paid for. You are not a seeing or a feeling being first. You are those, but you are not that first. You are a faith being, calling those things that be not as though they are, and they will be. Then love your neighbor as yourself. And the other thing I um, feel like you wanted me to share was um, relationship with God is is multifaceted. So He's God, and you need to relate to Him as God. A healthy fear of the Lord is important, mm -hmm. but that is not the first. The first is His love for you, unconditional. as Father. Mm -hmm. And then you get to love him as brother, mm -hmm. as friend, in the bride. And in the bride, uh, he showed it to me as, because uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. And uh, in the Song of Solomon, it's, it says, the bride's to be. And so people are like, I'm a bride, you know what I mean? And that's okay, you know, whatever God's revealing to you. But what he showed it to me as was we are all cells in a body. Like our body is made up of, of cells. And in every cell is the DNA coding or the writing, the word, written. And so in, we each are a cell in that, in that bride, in that body. So... It helped me um, as a wife, as a bride, uh, to come to him in a proper perspective because I think that there's a lot of stuff out there and there's a lot of um, twists that can happen mm -hmm. in, in people's emotions coming to him as the, as the bridegroom and it can get like really messy. And, and that's the flesh. And so if we can see from the perspective through God's eyes, um, it, it makes it easier. So we are all a part of the bride. And I've seen pictures like even in the, on the screen in the other room there where it's a bunch of people coming together and it, and it creates the bride. And that's what we are. Yeah. We are the bride. The body. He doesn't have many brides. He doesn't have a harem. He has a bride, mm -hmm. the bride. And the bride is <coughs> eternal. So it's throughout time. So we are the bride with his chosen people, Moses. And we all come together as this one beautiful thing, you know, whatever he he has created us to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that helped me um, because I saw a lot of, a lot of messiness in um, in that relationship type thing. So I think that you know we get to come to him and relate with him. And that's what the word is. It's our <coughs> communication device. And so um, can I share one other song with you? Okay. So um, he gave me this song in church one day. And uh, 
And I just want to share this with you. Because once we know who we are, he calls us. There's a place where we we come to in him. Excuse me, I just <laughs> pop the thing out, so it might make a loud noise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Okay. speaking through Dawn and, and touching someone out there today, Father, because you are a good God. Yeah. You are faithful and true. And your word says that, you know, if we abide in you, you will abide in us. So, you know, God is good. 
um, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. You know, so being a disciple is being an imitator of Christ. You know, he's asking us to do what he's called us to do without understanding. Sometimes it's not always about knowing how to do things right, because we don't. Uh, no matter how much we think we might, we, we really don't. You know, we have to go by the unction of God, or the Holy Spirit's going to guide us. We have to learn to allow him to fill our hearts and trust enough in him that he will guide us in the directions that we need to go in. And yeah, we'll make our own mistakes, but 99% of the time, God's not going to let us fall flat on our face if he wants us to do stuff. Um, you know, I like I... I try to be do, do my due diligence and, and you know when God gives me something I always try to follow what he says because I know if I don't I'm in trouble um, I was going to Africa in 2014 I went 24 days and the lady that I was going with is a, she's Catholic and we were going with the Catholic Church and she had her own organization down there it was uh, Kids in the Congo and um, you know as soon as we booked our tickets she happened to pull up my driveway, because she's my was my mail lady at the time, and says, uh, you know, there's a war going on over there. And I said, over where? She goes, in the Congo. And I said, and? She goes, well, I don't know if they're going to let us go. And I looked at her and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going. Because God's not going to make a way for us, yeah. for us not to do it. Yeah. He's going to, he, you know, if he's put it in your heart to do it, then you should follow it, because he's always going to make that way. And I just looked there and said, I'm still going. They're not going to shut it down. And if they shut it down now, by the time we're ready to go, because it was like two or three weeks before we were leaving, that war is going to be over with. Because God is good and he's faithful. And he knows that we're going there for a purpose and a particular reason. So, you know, we have to trust enough in him. And if we're imitators of Christ, then we'll always try to do the right things. You know, and... Here in John 13, 35 says, By this all people will know that you are my disciples. So if you're trying to be imitators of Christ, then they're going to know that you're a disciple of God. And it also says, if you have love for one another. Yeah. Greatest commandment, love your Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and your mind, and love your neighbors as yourself. Yeah. And as Don was saying, you know, sometimes... When we first become Christians, we have our own self-absorbed into ourselves because we're not really sure how else to be. Yeah. Because no one's ever taught us. Yeah. You know, and some people are more anxious than others, and some people are okay with themselves or more confident and, and knowing who they are. But, you know, do we, even the confident person may not know how confident they are in Christ because they don't have Christ. And the unconfident person may have more confidence in Christ because he has zero growth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're unsure of yourself, you're going to be unsure of God. And if you say that you love God and you're still unsure of yourself, you're lying to yourself because mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself, you're not loving God. Look in the mirror. Yeah. Look in the mirror. And if you can't look in the mirror and say, I love you, thank you, Jesus, for making me who I am, then you need to really find him and seek him and know him. Yeah. Because he can, he can give you that. Yeah. There's no excuse to say, oh, I can't. Oh, maybe later. Or, oh, it's my past. No, no. When you become a new creature in Christ, that means all things that you've done before are gone. And all the things that you're going to learn now are going to be new. Therefore, if you couldn't before, you certainly can now. Because you're a new creature in Christ. So if you have past things that have happened, and trust me, I've been there, done that, so please don't, don't take it as I'm better than you because I certainly am not in, in no way because I've had those pasts. I've been abused. I get it. I understand the sorrows and the sicknesses and the diseases that you get from being abused, being used, and being tortured by other people picking on you, saying you're too ugly, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're not this, you're not that. But you know what? You are. You are who you are because that's who God made you to be. And he can use that vessel. God doesn't use the righteous. Sorry. He uses the sinner. 
He uses the sinner because we're not perfect. And we don't, we can't depend on ourselves. If we were, if we were that righteous and that good, we wouldn't need God. I'm sorry, that's just the way it works. We, we wouldn't need him at all. So if you're a new creature in Christ, put all that past away. Make that choice today. And say, okay, God, you're telling me I'm a new creature? Then how do I obtain that? You obtain it by reading your word because it tells you how to do that in there. It, it tells you how to be that new creature. But when you become that new creature, it's hard. It's tough. But you know what? It's okay. Because we have to learn new things every day. And as children, we learn how to tie our shoes. We didn't know how to do it before. We learn how to put on our pants correctly instead of putting them on backwards, you know, or putting your shoe on the right foot instead of the left foot, or, you know, so you, it's not that you can't, it's how much do you want to learn. Mm. When you become a new creature, and, a new, and, you're, and if you're searching for Christ and you're needing to be a new creature, it's because you have issues, like all of us. We still have issues. But if we allow Christ to work in our lives, then he will do his job. And his job is to help us. But he won't help us if we don't ask. And we can say, oh yeah, I want that. I want you to help me. I want you to help me. But when he says, okay, this is what I need you to do. And you look at him and go, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't because of my past. I do it because, oh, they did this. Or I can't because. No, you can because that's what you choose. And if you're choosing to do the right, then put that past away and forget it. Because God already forgot it. He's not telling you that you're bad. You're telling you that you're bad. Yeah. And God is faithful, and he's true, and he loves you, and he loves each and every person that says they're not good enough. Moses wasn't good enough. He was a stutterer. As Jesse complained, that says, I, I, I don't know. And he, and he stutters, and he stutters, and he stutters. But God made his way straight. And he gave him the words to say. And he said, I'll give you Aaron. <laughs> so let's give Aaron a shot. Be that Aaron. Be that Aaron for Moses. So if you can't do it for yourself, do it for God. Because we are all his children, and he's not going to let us fail. Fortunately, there's no school for that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, because I'm terrible at school. You ain't old enough. And you know what? God gives us more than one opportunity to make it right. Even if we fail, he picks us back up. Do it again. If you fail, picks us back up. Do it again. If you're not good enough, picks us back up. Do it again. As long as we abide and are willing to say, yes, I will. And yes, I can. It might take you a little while. I mean, like we were talking earlier, Moses was how old before he started his ministry? 80? Dang, I'm super excited. I got another 20 years to learn more stuff. Yes! Give me my, oh, they wanted me uh, my knees messed up. My mother wanted to give me a cane. Then she wanted to hand me a wheel walker. My husband says, oh, why don't I have a big staff or something? I said, okay, I can be Moses, right? Boom. Let's do it. He knows you. Baby, the staff is what I need. Praise God. But, so, you know, if you're, if you're looking for fellowship, you're looking for a friend, don't look at a human body. Look at Christ, because he's your best friend. Yeah. You can tell him anything, and he's not going to talk to the neighbor. You can tell him anything you want about anybody you want, your wife, your husband, your mother, your sister, your brother. doesn't matter. You can even tell him about him. He doesn't care. He's not going to go tell the neighbor. Let him be your friend and guide you and help you and make you a new person in Christ, a new creature, so you can all that pass away. He's already forgiven it, so why don't you just do the same? That's all he's asking. If, he, if you can do what he can do, and he tells us that we can do twice as much. So let's do it as new disciples. Let's do it as new Christians. Let's do it and just move forward and make more disciples. Because if we become better Christians or better creatures in Christ, we can become better Christians. Therefore, we can make more disciples and go into the world and preach. So... That's it for me, otherwise we're still going for hours. So let's take a lunch break. I say thank you to everyone for coming, everyone for um, being online. Um, I think we've had uh, Connecticut here. We've had Massachusetts here. Um, I just saw online Texas is watching. Um, Rhode Island's watching. 
Um, so this evening starts at 4 for fellowship first, <laughs> 5 o'clock. Oh, sorry, at 6. We're going to do it early. <laughs> woo! I'm like, woo, we're jumping. Yeah, yeah, we're really early now. <laughs> no, so dinner break is now until 6, and then from 6 to 5 is fellowship. From, I mean, from 6 to 5. So. <laughs> All night. <laughs> From 6 to 7 is fellowship. From 7 to 8 will be worship. And from nine, uh, from 8 to 9 is um, should be Cheryl. I hope I say it right. And I'm sorry, Cheryl, if I, I make a mistake. But I think it's Raquel. R-O-C-K-E-L. Raquel. Um, should be here tonight. So be prepared. Be ready. Love God and open your heart enough to say yes and amen and surrender. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 